In statistics, a histogram is a graphic representation of a variable in the form of bars, where the area of each bar is proportional to the frequency of the represented values. They are used to obtain a general first view or panorama of the distribution of the population or of the sample, in this case of the simulated numbers, with respect to a characteristic, quantitative and continuous, the magnitude of the risk. In this way, it offers an integral vision allowing to observe a preference or trend on the part of the simulated data because it is located towards a certain region of values within the spectrum of possible values, whether infinite or not, that the evaluated characteristic can acquire. Thus, we can demonstrate behaviors, observe the degree of homogeneity, agreement or conciseness between the values of all the parts that make up the group of simulated data, or in contrast, to be able to observe the degree of variability and therefore the dispersion of all the values that the parts take. The vertical axis represents the frequencies, that is, the amount of the simulated data, as the case may be, that is located in a certain value or sub-range of values of the characteristic measure here, which is the monetary magnitude of the risk. Obviously, when this spectrum of values is infinite or very large, it is reduced to only a part that shows the trend or behavior of the population. At other times, this spectrum is extended to show the distance or location of the simulated data from a value of interest. Histograms are used to relate continuous quantitative variables, which is a case of risks calculated by the product of their frequencies and their severities. Place your cursor on cell outputs C2, total risk, and immediately click on the histogram icon on DT Simulator's ribbon. Look at the histogram for total risk selected from cell C1. The table to the right shows the main statistics. With 10,000 simulated iterations, the lowest possible total risk value is approximately $4,800. The maximum value is close to $38,000 causing a variability range greater than $33,000. The mean value is slightly under $14,800, and the median, or 50th percentile, is $14,300. The degree to which the middle and median data are much closer to the lower limit of $4,800 than to the upper limit of $38,000 speaks to a relatively high skewness of the simulated curve. That is, there are low probabilities of very extreme values on the positive or right side of the curve. The fact that the asymmetry in this is positive at 0.78 and relatively high indicates this high degree of asymmetry in the curve. In fact, this is why it is possible to set lower and upper limits of percentiles and target values. For example, at this time, the two set percentiles have been set up at 20 and 80. The two target values have been arbitrarily set at $10,000 and $20,000. These four statistics can be modified in parameters. The 20th percentile is approximately $11,600, and the 80th percentile is approximately $17,700. This means that there's a 20% probability that the results will be less than $11,600, and there's also a 20% probability that the results are greater than $17,700. That is to say, towards the center, there is a concentration of 60% probability that the results are between these values. We can then calculate the probabilistic contingency. If the project owner uses the 80th percentile as a subjective reference for contingency assessment, which is, by the way, standard in some industries, then the difference between the 80th percentile of 17,700 and the mean of 14,800 represents a probabilistic contingency of approximately $2,900. That is, we can affirm that a contingency of 20% of the average value $2,900 over $14,800 would be enough to cover additional variations in risks 
with up to 80% confidence. Determining these probabilistic contingencies is, by the way, an impossible task for qualitative heat maps. Another way of looking at it is through target values. There's only an 8% probability that the total risk is less than $10,000. There's also a 91% probability that the values are less than $20,000. Note that there's a large scale of probability of just 9% that the possible outcomes will be greater than this $20,000 up to an extreme value of $38,000 as a maximum. This very long tail consists of low probability outcomes. Only one in 11 possible outcomes would be bounded beyond $20,000. Now, let us temporarily change the second percentile to 99 using the parameters icon on DT Simulator's ribbon. We would then observe that there's only a 1% probability that the risks are greater than about $25,800, proving once again the asymmetric nature of the distribution of total risks. Now, we go again to click on the histogram icon while the cursor remains on total risk. On the other hand, the model also calculates the standard deviation here at an approximate value of $3,800. Remember that the standard deviation measures the average distance of variation of the data from the mean, in this case $14,800. However, this indicator does not say much since the true power of the standard deviation is when the distribution tends to be symmetric, and this is not the case here. Note that it is possible to select any other risk category. Place your cursor on cell C3, technical risk, and then click on the histogram icon. Or choose logistics risk on cell C4 and click on the histogram icon. Or on any other of other risk categories, since the model also collected information for these output variables. The graph and the statistics are automatically modified when selecting the category to display. Choose, for example, management-related risk and click on the histogram icon. As this risk category only contains an individual risk, penalties on regulatory issues, then you will see it is highly partitioned and not very concentrated. In fact, go to Model tab and place your cursor on any cell of row 17, where penalties on regulatory issues is located. Once again, click on the histogram button on DT Simulator's ribbon. You will see that the histogram is identical to the previous one. Obviously, you can choose any histogram from this menu, as seen at three different levels. On the Outputs tab, at either the level of total risk or at the level of each of the six additional risk categories that group the individual risks. On the Model tab, at the level of each individual risk. Remember that a .png file has been saved with the name histogram. PNG, on the same directory where the workbook file resides. You can use this file to insert it into your documents or presentations.